All right. Um, so I'm Steve Baskoff. I'm a data science and data curation specialist uh, in the DISC office of the libraries. And uh, I work with people on a lot of different things, but one of the things that I have worked on in the past is trying to help people understand about what ORCID is and uh, how they can use it to help uh, disambiguate themselves out there. So I want to talk about that for maybe about 20 minutes or less, hopefully, and then turn things over to Andy. And hopefully, we can then have time left in the end for questions. Um, it, I'm, I'm also fine if people want to ask questions as we go along. There's not that many people here, so please uh, feel free. Um, I'm not sure if I can manage to watch the chat at the same time, but if um, Derek or somebody's doing that and you want to put something in the chat, he can ask me. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about uh, ORCID and what it is. Whoops, that's the last slide. Why is it doing that? Okay, here we are. <laughs> so this is an overview of what I want to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about is what's the problem with names? Basically, uh, what is the issue with disambiguating yourself? And then we'll talk about what ORCID identifiers are and then how they can be used to automatically update information about uh, your academic output. And the last thing that I want to talk about, which is, I think, the most exciting part, and that's who is using ORCID to try to grease the wheels of, uh, of figuring out who has produced what academically. So uh, first, I want to talk about this problem of disambiguation. If you have a very common name like John Smith or Maria Sanchez or something like that, then there's going to be a lot of other people that share the same name as you. Um, and so it's hard to know which of those people are responsible for particular um, academic work. Other problems are people whose names change or people who don't always go by the same name, people who, who use variants of their names like Bill and Billy and William and so on. So one of the solutions to this problem is to just not use names. Um, so I'm gonna illustrate this with uh, Jim Croft, who's a botanist, an Australian botanist, who goes variously by Jim Croft, James R. Croft, J. R. Croft, with periods and J. R. Croft without periods. Um, so one of the solutions is instead of using name to use uh, an IRI, which is stands for Internationalized Resource Identifier. It's basically, it looks like a URL, but it, it serves as, an, as a unique identifier that um, can be used through a web browser to find out about something. So there is one kind of IRI called Virtual International Authority File or VIAF um, it's generated by OCLC, and they basically assign these identifiers to people. So um, that, and th this system is curated, but it still isn't without error because um, when I was looking up this particular person, there's one J.R. Croft who is the botanist that I was interested in, and then someone who was involved in the International Research Institute for Nuclear Decommissioning, who clearly was a different person. And the problem here was there wasn't any way that I could fix this. I had to actually go to one of my friends who's a metadata library and get them to fix this. So there's, there are a number of different approaches that people are using uh, to manage identifiers. So the one that I just illustrated, uh, I guess you could put in the category of authority control, which is uh, pe people, just any old person cannot fix uh, problems where two uh, names are being conflated with different people. Um, the polar opposite is sort of like the Wikidata approach, which is that anybody can change things. Um, then, of course, you have problems of potential vandalism and things like that. But the third approach, and this is the one that ORCID uses, is to let people manage their own records. So it's not, it's not, um, uh, it's not locked up from you, but also not just anybody can, uh, can manage the record. It's something that you can manage for yourself. There are other identifier systems like Researcher ID and Google Scholar who have varying degrees of control over the records, but ORCID is the, 
system that you can really control yourself. And I'll show you in a little bit exactly what that means. So let's talk a little bit about what ORCID identifiers are. So ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor Identifier. So really, you don't have to say ORCID identifier. You could just say ORCID because identifier is a part of the acronym. But realistically, people say ORCID identifier or ORCID ID, so that's OK. Um, ORCID is created by an or a nonprofit organiz uh, organization, and their website, ORCID.org, is where you go if you want to create an ORCID ID. So um, as I said, uh, it's a when you create an ORCID ID, you basically end up with this IRI um, that has a unique uh, number identifying number for you, and you can put it in a browser, and people can find out who you are. And in the ORCID website, <clears throat> you can link your identity to your works, your organization, and and also funding. This is uh, extremely widely accepted now. It's probably the most commonly used identifier for people. And uh, they've committed basically to maintaining this over the long term. So it's persistent. It's not going to go away. And it's also machine processable. So ORCID has an API that other organizations can use to find out information about you once you have a record there. So using an ORCID makes sure that you get correct attribution for your research activities and because it's an IRI and not a name. This problem that we have with spelling and punctuation and so on doesn't occur. And critically, it is under your control. The other thing I also just want to throw in here is it always seems to me like it should be pronounced ORCID because ORCID is actually spelled with an H, but people call it ORCID anyway. So uh, I, but if you want to distinguish between ORCID the flower and ORCID the identifier, you stick in the H. It is super easy to get an ORCID identifier. You just go to ORCID.org and the requirements of the information that you have to put in is extremely minimal. You can have as little as a first name, although um, for most people, a first name is not very useful without a surname, but I think that's really just for cultures where people don't have surnames. And then you have to have an email address. You can also add a lot of other information, which I'll talk about uh, later. Um, one thing you should think about if you create an ORCID is what the visibility settings or the privacy choices are. You are allowed to restrict access to your record, but honestly, why would you bother setting up an ORCID if you weren't going to make it public? Because the whole point of it is for people to be able to identify you and see how you're connected with your work. So I would highly recommend if you set one up to, to make your visibility settings, uh, make your profile visible to everyone. Um, once you've created a profile, you can add quite a bit of information about yourself if you want. You can put uh, all of your present and past employment, your education, memberships, funding, all kinds of things like that. Some people use their ORCID profile almost like a CV. Other people find it annoying to have to have another place to put all this information about themselves and they just put in their names. But the really critical thing is getting you connected with your works. And there are two ways that you can do this. You can do it manually, uh, but you can also do it through other organizations because of the API. If you go into your ORCID record and add uh, a work yourself, then it will show up as the source as being you. Um, but it's actually nicer to allow other trusted organizations to edit your record for you. And the most, um, and so there's a, if you go to the page for um, uh, linking works, you can select what organizations you want to allow to edit your record. The most critical one is Crossref. Crossref is the largest issuer of DOIs. So many journal articles that are issued now do it through Crossref. So if you allow Crossref to um, have access to your account and edit your record, then 
you no longer have to go in and manually put all of your works in. They will flow in there automatically when you create new works. Giving access to an organization like Crossref does not allow them to change things like your institutional affiliation and where you went to school. It's only to add the works. So the result Steve, of this- Steve, can I jump yes. in for a second? Sure. Um, so part of my job, I think, as interim director is to ask questions yeah. that may be dumb or may not be. Could you say what a DOI is and what that means? Oh, thank you for asking that question. Okay, so DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier and DOIs are assigned to most uh, uh, journal articles uh, and some other things. Uh, it's not so common with books. It's mostly with, with journal articles. But it's it, it, in the same way that an ORCID identifier uniquely identifies a person, a DOI uniquely identifies a work. And the, in the same way, if you put, a, a, there's an, a uh, URL version of a DOI, and if you put it in a browser, it will always lead you directly, at least to information about the uh, work. But if it's not behind a paywall, it generally will lead you to an actual copy of the work itself. And it's also machine readable. So uh, the information about those works with DOIs can be harvested. And so part of the goal of having a machine readable identifier for a person and a machine readable identifier for the works is that computers can make the links and not it doesn't require people to do that manually. So thanks for that question. All right, so what happens if you sign up for this automatic updating? So here's an example of an ORCID profile page. So the top part here are all the things that the person put in manually. But after this part of the profile um, is where the works come. So if you, uh, more and more now, journal editors are asking you for your ORCID when you submit an article. So here's an example of something that I was involved in that ended up, it was um, a published abstract. And when we submitted the abstract, we included our ORCIDs and without me doing anything, uh, it showed up on my ORCID profile because it had a DOI and it came from Crossred and, and flowed right in that. And so I actually got one of these emails like this yesterday notifying me that um, this is another talk that I gave. And it, um, I got an email from ORCID saying, hey, there's a new item added. And so you can go in and basically curate that. But once you set this up, you don't have to go in and add the items manually like you would normally have to do on, say, your CV. And once a work gets added uh, automatically, then the source shows up as cross rep. So if you have people checking out your ORCID profile, and they wonder like, well, did you fake all this stuff? If they see that the article came from Crossref, then they know that this is not something you put in, this is actually coming from a legitimate thing that has a DOI. So it, it sort of adds to the weight of it. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, how, how is this more broadly applicable besides just creating basically a fancy, the automated version of a CV online. And this is also going to segue into what Andy's talking about. So one of the things that's starting to happen now is that other organizations are starting to use ORCIDs to uniquely identify people. And probably the first organization to really jump into this is National Institutes of Health. And they are now requiring um, for a lot of grant proposals people to include their ORCID. And so you know you get you get identified with your funding this way and and that's one part of your orchid id but also then once the the works start to come out then works that were funded by this grant get connected to you and also to publications um and that happens basically automatically because they don't have to try to figure out who you are they know who you are because it's all linked together with the orchid another thing that um, fairly recently came out is um, the National Science Foundation, when you submit a grant, requires you to include a curriculum a vitae, a CV, uh, 
And so now one of their options for creating a CV to include in your grant is uh, with this thing called um, uh, sci in CV or science at work, science expert networks curriculum vitae. And so that's one of the two formats approved. And it has basically a button you can click that if you have an ORCID profile, you click the button and it sucks all that information in and automatically creates the CV for you. So that is a time saver. So these are the two main things that I know about, right? Oh, actually a third one, uh, grants.gov will also use your ORCID ID to associate grants that you have um, applied for with your record. So I think this is the wave of the future and we're gonna see more and more Organiz funding organiza organizations wanting you to do this because they also, it's in their interest to connect the grant you got with you and your publications um, so that people can know what the result is of the funding that they gave you. There's two other places that I think are really interesting where ORCIDs are being used a lot. One of them, which is a thing that I like to talk about a lot, but I'm gonna restrain myself today is Wikidata. So um, Wikidata is an exciting new uh, online database that anyone can edit, just like anyone can edit Wikipedia, anyone can edit this knowledge graph. Uh, and the ORCID is one of the key ways of identifying people and linking them together. And so if you, so there's a lot of efforts to pull in data from ORCID and other sources and get it into Wikidata. And then once you do that, you can do interesting visualizations. So this is a, a network graph for Antonis Rokas, who's in the biological sciences department. And it's basically showing all of his network of co-authors. And this is based on querying of data that's in Wikidata. So that's kind of a cool thing that's becoming more and more common. And the last thing um, which I think is critical, and this is, uh, relating to what Andy's just going to talk about, is that we are, I believe, going to see over time an increasing use of ORCID by information aggregators to, um, to correctly disambiguate people. So NCBI, which is a big, um, uh, the National Center for Biotechnology Information, is a huge aggregator of data for um, the biosciences. And they are um, starting to use ORCIDs for automatically syncing publications with people. Um, the other thing, which I think is like really important, and I think this is also a relatively new thing. So Web of Science, which a lot of people are familiar with, or Web of Knowledge more broadly, it's a product of Clarivit, which is an information company. And Clarivit also, you, uh, produces Insights, which is a, a platform that uh, people like our um, Pi office here at Vanderbilt basically use to pull information about what their researchers are doing. And so having an ORCID ID um, can help to reduce, uh, to reduce the number of instances where you are being confused with somebody else in your bibliometric benchmarking. So for example, I sat in an, an Insights dog and pony show about a year ago, and just for fun, I ran the biological sciences department through it. And so like Carl Johnson, who has a very common name, there were some of his works that were not being associated with him because they weren't matched up properly. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna see more and more people like Clarivit using ORCID to, to disambiguate people and to get do, to eliminate duplicate profiles. So if you if you have some of your works not being associated with you, then you're not basically getting credit for that in the bibliometric, bibliometric benchmarking for your impact. So one of the things that I haven't done, but I, uh, but I wanna investigate, and I put a little bitly down here at the bottom, um, Publons, which is the ID that is used for Web of Science, allows you to claim your identity and there is and then you can go in once you've claimed that identity and link it with your orchid id and so unlike the situation with crossref where there's a one-way transfer of information 
from Crossref into ORCID. Apparently, you can set up a two-way system where information that's in ORCID goes into Publons. And that's like really important because this Publons ID is what feeds things into both Web of Science and Insights. So I, I don't know a lot about this, but I again, I think we're gonna see more and more of this in the future. So I'm gonna wrap things up because I've burned through my time. But um, I think that ORCID is a really important thing that all researchers and scholars should use because it's fully under your control. You're gonna see more and more journals asking for it. You're gonna see more and more funding agencies requiring it. It's really becoming the de facto standard. And I think we're also gonna see these kinds of um, impacts where, uh, where things that weren't possible before, like finding your non-publication contributions, like re uh, reviews that you write and things like that, that don't get covered in the traditional like DOI system are gonna start being linked to researchers through ORCID. So those sorts of works that the academic work that you do that you don't get credit for in publications may start to become associated with you once ORCIDs are more widely used. Um, and then also it enables uh, organizations to sort of figure out what's going, like Vanderbilt's, um, what's the PI office stand for? Per, uh, anyway, the bean counters <laughs> who figure they out- They are now like, no longer called PI. Um, oh no, okay, well, anyway. They, data they, and strategic analytics. Okay, well, str these strategic analytics people can figure out what you're doing better if you have an ORCID. So I, my appeal to you is if you don't have an ORCID, you should go and get one. And that is the end of my time. And I think I didn't go too much over 20 minutes. So I'll unshare and turn things over to Andy.